So I arrived in Gaza the first day of the ceasefire, August 26. People were finally, finally uh, safe again. And that first day we went out uh, with, with our team into the border area. There was rubble on the street. You, you saw the, the, the dead animals lying everywhere. People were running out onto the street. We were the first people to move um, so soon after the conflict to these sensitive areas. And um, we got to the, the border area where we work. This is where most of the agricultural land in Gaza. It's a crowded little place, but most of the land is there. And uh, I remember seeing my, my field officers, who had been working with the ICC for 10 years. They were speechless. The, these fields were turned into, into battlegrounds. Everything was upside down. You had irrigation systems ripped out. You had sand dunes five meters high. You had reservoirs toppled over. You had the majority of the houses in ruins. And um, yeah, it was it was like an earthquake, but more more violent. And uh, and so when you, when we looked at the sea of destruction, we uh, we weren't sure where to start, what to do. And uh, it was a feeling of of, uh, of hopelessness, but just for a second, because we got back to the office that day, and uh, and my field officers they're so experienced they've they've been through three wars already. They immediately said, okay, we have three priorities. First, we have to relevel the land. Without that, nothing can happen. We can't rebuild the roads, we can't rebuild the irrigation systems, nothing. So that's the first thing. We need to re-level this agricultural land. Second, once that's done, we improve the access, we open roads. And then third, we put in place the irrigation systems again so farmers can farm the land. So we knew from the first day that we had to level the land. That was a precondition for everything else. But before we could do that, we had to clear and check the land of unexploded remnants of war because you had huge amounts of artillery and tank shells fired. Many of them, the UN estimates up to 10% of them didn't explode. So these, these fields were littered with this ammunition lying around and it was dangerous for us to work. So we worked together with our colleagues from the WEC department, um, experts in, 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 in these things. And we set up a system together with the local authorities and with the, with the Israeli army to be able to clear the land. We also did mine risk education sessions with farmers, with the bulldozer drivers. And within several weeks, we managed to, to clear, the, clear the land. And then we could start with the bulldozers. And I remember the first day that uh, after this four or five weeks, it seemed like a lifetime, um, that the bulldozers started working. It was you know, six in the morning, the sun was coming up, and I remember these eight bulldozers following our ICRC car, and, uh, and they started uh, turning these, these huge sand dunes and just making everything flat again. It sounds so simple, and I guess it's every boy's dream to watch these big bulldozers driving around, but they moved so quickly. And, uh, and so for the next two months, we had 24 bulldozers working from sunrise to sunset every single day. Um, and we managed to, to re-level all of the border area from the north to the south before the rainy season started in November. And um, yeah, that, that meant, of course, that farmers wouldn't have to miss another season. Many of these farmers didn't just lose the irrigation systems, didn't just use their, their inputs, but they also lost their source of livelihoods. They couldn't, they couldn't uh, earn income, they were in debt. Um, and so after re-leveling the land, we followed it up with giving farmers conditional cash grants um, to be able to restart farming because they didn't have the money to reinvest into their fields. And, um, and so they bought irrigation systems, they bought the inputs, and now they, they're starting to earn revenue to pay off the debts I wouldn't say it's a drop in the ocean, but we've got a long way to go. Um, if you look at the scale of, of the needs in Gaza, our work in the border area addresses a certain place, a certain population. We cannot do everything. But for these communities, these farming communities in the border area, the, to, them, to them it really it makes a difference what the ICRC is doing there. And uh, 
and so it was um yeah it was a it was a huge uh, huge remarkable um experience for me